Welcome to Talk Tennis. Uh, Troy and I are here for... This is a horrible start. Let's try that again. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to Talk Tennis. We are coming at you in 2023. Troy, thank you for joining me today. Yeah. Thanks for having me back on. And it's a new year. New year. It's crazy to think that... uh, we were ta- it felt like we were talking about 2022 new releases like it was like a couple months ago or right. something. But then again, you know, time flies when you're having fun, working <laughs> hard, whatever. And this is one of our favorite, or I think maybe yours, I shouldn't speak for you. But and one of my favorite episodes is because we get to talk about the gear, the players. Australian Open has started, so we're seeing everything on court. It's been a couple weeks of preseason, and it's just fun because tennis is back. Yes, and I know for sure... Definitely for you, around our neck of the woods here in California, it's been like raining and Uh. gray skies, but you watch the Australian and it's sunny and all the players got tans and they're rocking the bright clothes. I I think it gives us a little hope that spring's coming around. Seriously. And uh, it's like Australian Open started, so first night falling asleep while watching tennis. Yeah. (laughs) We're we're at that grind. That's always the hard part. It's like, uh, it's 11 o'clock and I got to be to work early. So Should I keep watching that Tiafo match uh, last night? (laughs) I just kept waking up and yeah. Um, Awesome. Well, and then also I did want to bring up Breakpoint on Netflix because it is trending and I feel like a lot of people are talking about it. What are your two cents on it? Have you watched any? What do you think? Um, I jumped into the first episode, The okay. Maverick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, everyone's favorite bad boy. <laughs> yeah, right. So far, I, I really like how it's uh, filmed. Looks really good. Um, you know, kind of the behind the scenes perspectives are really cool so mm-hmm. far. I can't, you know, say you know too much about the whole series. Cause I haven't watched the whole thing, start to finish. And I was kind of getting into it, but then yesterday. Australian Open started and it was like, uh, I'm going to watch live tennis. I can watch this yeah. in the gaps in between. So I don't know. What do you think so far? Um, I wasn't sure what to think about it, but started it Friday night, watched the first three episodes in a row, and I really like it a lot. And finished the first five pretty fast. Um, and I can say that I have a player that's showcased in the episodes that I really like respect and want to root for more now because they showed a side of her personality that I never really realized. And it was one of your girls, Bedosa, Paula Bedosa. I didn't really realize the ins and outs of some of her mental struggles. And she talks about it. It's pretty cool. Right. You think of like Spanish players, you just think everybody's like, like so strong, like Rafa. Yeah. And it's not. And she's like beautiful. And like, you're just like, ah, she's got everything going for her. But she talks a lot about her depression. And I think that's pretty cool. And I get, I didn't even realize, like, how did, how did I miss it? Because they say she was one of the first players to really speak up about it. And I don't know. I know you're a fan of hers and she's one of the players that you like to watch, but I don't know if you were even aware of like all her struggles. Uh, Yeah. Not all of them, but I do know, I remember her talking about it maybe a couple years ago or something like that yeah and um yeah it's just it, it's good to to get into the players and like their mindset and you know we think of them as these just like athletes that can withstand everything we look up to them a lot of times and think like they're superhuman you know but mm-hmm. they are just so human just like any one of us so it's like that, that part of the story, I think, is awesome. Yeah. Um, I definitely got to see her in a new light, which is cool. I never, like, really didn't like her and whatnot, but now I'm like, oh, she's awesome. Plus, she's one of those players that just always seems like she's working hard. And I know that sounds silly, but um, in the show, you'll see Rafa before a match, and he's intense. But she's also super intense before her matches. And I don't know if it's the Spanish thing or yeah. if it's just how she, like, brings her focus back. But um, it was really fun to watch. Yeah. So I can't wait for the next five to come out, but we got a bit of time. Also, Netflix, we have a suggestion. Um, I was talking about it with my mom, and we said, how cool would it be to do a documentary like this on either players outside the top 100, which would blow people's minds, or double specialists? I thought that would be cool. Yeah, both of those topics would be really cool. Um, Call us Netflix. Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) There was a is it the is it a book or movie the one called Journeyman? Yes, I never jumped into that. I one. I think it's a movie. Yeah. yeah, 
And that, yes, that would be similar. Depicts the life and the struggle. Yeah. Of the, yeah, you're not in the top 50, top 100. And yeah, yeah, it's not glamorous. (laughs) I I remember a while back, we uh, we had our local players like Andre Dome. Mm -hmm. And then even even before that, I think when Andy was, Andy Gerst was doing like his challengers, future stuff and blogging for us. And uh, you get it, you get a pretty cool insight on like the life at, of of the tour at that level, yeah. you know, and like how most players are not even profiting money, barely breaking even, or you're living off of someone else's support right. just to try to yeah get there to make it yeah. quote and unquote make it. Not everybody makes it to the top one fifty or where, wherever most it is don't. where you can even try to think about profiting at that point. It's right. cra- it's tennis is a, a really tough sport in that aspect. I also wanted to bring up, it seems like there's this trend all of a sudden in tennis where, I don't know about for you, but like growing up, it was not super cool to mix brands. Like you, if you were like a junior player, you wanted to be head to toe because then it looked like either A, you had a sponsorship or B, you were sponsored. Yeah. Um, And I remember coming to T-Dub and like we kind of joked that like the T-Dub brand is like you wear Nike this, Adidas that, New Balance this. All of a sudden now on tour, we're kind of seeing a little bit of blending of some of the brands, which I think is cool. But we can we can jump in from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like growing up as a kid watching, you know, pretty much like sports that I played when I was younger, football, baseball, basketball. Yeah. You see the the top pros and they're if they're sponsored, they're kitted, they're all right. Nike. So yes. if you want to emulate, you know, your Jordan to your Kobe to nowadays like players like Mike Trout or whatever, like, yeah, the, you yeah, know, yeah. You, you get the kit. Right. And that's you know, you fit in when you it's kind of a joke, but like you see, you know, say in, when you're in grade school or whatever and you, you're mixing a Nike hat with the DNA shoes yeah, and no, no, no. you're like, What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. you, can't, you know, so it's like <laughs> To be cool, you wanted to like match the gear head to toe, but like kind of going back to the same thing we were just talking about with like your top hundred to one hundred and fifty players. Ideally, you know the ones that are, especially the ones that I guess are more marketable, they're going to be head to toe Adidas, head mm-hmm. to toe Nike, mm-hmm. and then they have the racket brand, which all their racket hard good stuff is going to be through Head right. or Wilson, but then. You know, there's a certain level where you don't have that full on brand sponsorship. Yeah. And whether it's another source that's sponsoring you or even like players like our team Tita mm-hmm. players where they might have a shoe contract with this brand. Yeah. But they don't have an apparel one or, you know, like they're getting, you know, us as a retailer, we have all the brands. So right. it's like <laughs> if they're not contracted with that specific brand, either they're going to go with the best most comfortable whatever type of fit they can get right or they're just piecing it together because they're just struggling to live life on tour (laughs) Yeah, you know yeah no totally yeah and no that's so true and i have that well we can start talking about nike because we saw nike this year i wrote down the statement but nike included major reductions in its contracts and players now have to meet a certain performance requirement such as ranking positions tournament entries to earn money with Nike. And I guess someone said, one of the agents said that players outside the top 20 wearing Nike are not making any money. Mm. And we did see some players that have been full head to toe Nike. I'm going to bring up Sloane Stevens. She shifted into now free people. I don't know what she, I think she still has some of her old Nike Vapor Pro 9.5 or 10. So I don't know. Yeah. She has the stock somewhere. Yeah. She, she was like Vapor X. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Maybe some Vapor Pros at one point, but I think the Vapor X was the one she was using mostly last year. But it does blow my mind a little bit that a Grand Slam winner kind of and American player. I don't know. I'm well. So anyways, she got dropped it or so it seems. So maybe yeah. she cut her ties. But um we can start there. And she had a racket switch this year. Yeah. So why do you think she switched from her endorsed radical <laughs> to what I hear is actually an endorsed speed, but has more characteristics of a speed racket than a radical racket? Yeah. So uh, for her racket, um, at least what I've seen in images and watching some of her uh, early matches this year, it looks like she is using a, some sort of speed or speed. Uh, pro stock speed mm-hmm. whatever yeah from head so i would assume 
she's just going for like maybe a little more forgiveness. Yeah. With the radical being a 98, um, typically the older ones were maybe slightly thinner in the beam, just a little more control uh, from the radical. Mm -hmm. I would assume maybe she just wants a little bit more help from the racket, whether it's a little bit bigger sweet spot or maybe just slightly easier access to spin. Yeah. So it seems like maybe that's where she's going. Who knows if, you know, I know a lot of players kind of experiment around and see if they'll stick to it because sometimes the change or what they want in the racket it sounds great, but when they get out on court, they just have that trust conflict in it. Right. You know? Yeah. Kind of like, you know, <laughs> your racket, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you're 97. <laughs> so um, we'll see where it goes from there. But it looks like, yeah, she's trying out the, the speed line. And she's got a new coach, too, who's coming from Rafa's camp. Um, so I'm curious, you know, it's always one of those where you, like, would love to hear more. Is she switching rackets because the coach should suggested it is she switching rackets because she thought she needed something new but a lot of changes for sloan in 2023 and hopefully it brings good stuff i love watching her play yeah yeah and then what you brought up about the apparel the yeah. nike thing yeah i wasn't really sure if, how, how that was if it was like a top 20 cutoff or if it was like top 20 or certain like uh, other requirements maybe because mm -hmm. there's a couple others out there that aren't with Nike right now. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things I I need more details and we haven't heard officially from Nike, but I guess that would be a good question to ask. Um, even watching yesterday, Kyle Edmund, who was like the next big thing coming out of the UK a few years ago and he's had several injuries that have set him back, but he's wearing the Vapor 11, so I'm thinking... Is that a Nike contract or did he buy them? And Yeah, and he had the, the new Nike kit yeah. as well. Yeah. So maybe he's just sticking with Nike, but he maybe he's not profiting or like yeah. making any money off of it. It's just like if Nike was willing to do that kind of thing, like, hey, that we'll get be. you out. We'll yeah. take care of you for the year, but – we don't, we, don't have, we, don't have, we don't have much of a check to give you. I don't I don't know how that works. Well, and I do know also there is a racket brand. I don't necessarily want to say, but they have made a cutoff also this year, and they will supply players with a discount, but they will not give them free rackets, free strings, and mm. they would obviously not make or benefit any extra on endorsements. So maybe that's – it's interesting that tennis is kind of going in that direction, where then we see someone like Naomi Osaka, who is this global ambassador for female athletics, in my opinion, and transcends like tennis. And she's got insane endorsements, including like Louis Vuitton. And um, she's just making tons of money on endorsements. Yeah. And we're seeing she's not playing this probably first half, first maybe all year because she's pregnant and going to have a baby, but she's still going to, I would assume, still be a leader in that space. I don't yeah. know. That's, it's, a, it's a different uh, it's weird. way to like look at the whole sponsorship thing, you know? Yeah, like if you look at last year, 22, she was head and toes over the rest of the competition in, in endorsement money, right? Yeah, like she was but like she barely played. Highest paid female athlete, but you don't. Lately in the last, I don't know, year or so, you, you haven't really seen her as like the slam contender that mm -hmm. she once was. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's and then you got someone like Iga. Yes. And then Iga, well, Iga is awesome, I think. Um, and I could gush about her. I don't know if you saw they just put out a story on um what's the website? Uh what the heck is it called? The Players Tribune. Okay. Did you see it? No. Oh, it's great. I'll send it to you. Um, she talks about how she grew up as very introverted and that she, like when she was 11, she wasn't sure that 11-year-olds could even be capable of wanting to be Grand Slam champions because, like, that was just never a thought in her head. <laughs> and, like, she talks about her team and her dad and how her dad's, like, super emotional. And, like, it's a really great story. I That girl can do no wrong. I love watching her. Um, but Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's so, she's so dominant and been so dominant. Pretty yeah. much they were talking about it on TV, you know, since – Barty kind of just said, I'm done and I'm going to leave the sport. And she even took her name off the rankings list so that the other girls could step up. And yeah, that's cool. Ever since then, it seems like Ega has been the one to do it. Yeah. And she's been like dominant, you know. Didn't she have like, was it 37 matches that she won in a row? It was year? a pretty crazy number. So yeah. Crazy. Um, but as far as like her gear. Yes. So right now she's still, still re repping Asics. for yeah, Asics and Technofiber. 
I know though on our message boards there was like some talks of you know the people that dig into the pro player stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was talks that she potentially may be leaving ASICs. Yeah. But um, it looks like up until even yesterday or whenever last match, she's head to toe. She's got the new Joe Resolution 9. Yeah. I the know. newest uh, outfit, so I don't know what uh, what kind what kind of contract or anything's going on, but it looks like she's going she strong. She looks committed to with ASICs, ASICs and yeah. still nothing really changed with her Technofiber setup. So. Yes, so it's good to know. I know I check every day too, <laughs> just because yeah. I'm super curious. Um, let's go over some of the some of the players not necessarily have changed, but some of the big names right now. Jessica Pagula is doing amazing things already in. This Australian swing, she did great. She was at United Cup. I don't know if you heard her interview last night. Um, it was really cute. She obviously is a big Bills fan, so she's been like watching all the games and everything. But and I guess her coach is a Jags fan, so she oh. was yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she was saying that they had such great chemistry at the United Cup that her and Tiafo were still practicing together at the Australian Open. Yeah, because. He needs a little of her seriousness, and she needs a little of his playfulness. Hey, you know? <laughs> I thought that was cute. <laughs> um, and in her first round, she was all business. But Yeah, um, I think she was done in like 50 minutes. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, and we just had a, like a little office pick them thing. Yeah. And- uh, those might have been might have been people that I picked. The uh, with, oh, yeah. with, wait, you picked both of them. Yeah, Pagula, Pagula, and oh, Tiafo, oh, and it yeah, was like okay. usually when people ask, "Oh, who's your you know yeah. pick your Australian?" That's for me funny. and for like most people, it's like, are you gonna pick with your heart or your that brain? you want to win, yeah. or people that you put your money on? Sometimes mm-hmm. it's both. Yeah. If I was gonna put my money on anybody in the tournament right now. I'd probably put my money on Djokovic. That's who I picked. For once, I didn't pick with my heart. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. <laughs> but the have... girls I picked with my heart. I had to. Okay. Yeah. Who'd you pick? Sabalenka. She's been playing really good. I hope she wins one. I and just want her to I get I think a, most people in the office really like Sabalenka. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. I don't know anybody that that I've talked to. Like, oh, I can't stand her. She's no. just so yeah, likable. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. She just puts it all out there. Yeah, she has that she's fiery. contagious <laughs> smile. She's awesome. I love her. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think. On the women's side, I mean, I feel like you got to go Djokovic on the men. He's yeah. playing great. I mean, he's got a vendetta. Too. Hardcore, yeah. five sets. Yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. Uh, women, you would probably put Iga as the front runner just based on yeah. recent history, but she hasn't won the Australian no. app. Um, and then girls that like the WT girls that look really good have been Sabalenka and Pagula lately. Yeah. Coco, uh, too. Oh, Coco's, Coco's playing really yeah. good. And she won. Um, a, did she win? She won a, the Brisbane. Brisbane. Did she win? I think one she. Of the I think she won one of the warm-ups. I think she did too. Um, but uh, next round for Coco to get through, that's tough. Her and Raducanu. Yeah. I think she'll. I think it's more of a bummer for Raducanu because I think Coco's going to win that one. I do too. And then from what I hear, well, it's supposed to be super hot. I guess uh, moving forward through um, the tournament, but. The courts play fairly fast, I think, maybe. Yeah. They were talking about how the courts are supposed to be pretty fast yeah. at the Australian. And then right after Coco Goff's match last night, they were they were like, how are the courts? And she's like, I don't know if I played on Rod Laver last year. So she's like, I can't compare it to last year. But she was saying that Rod Laver plays slower than Kia and oh. all the outside courts. Interesting. Maybe just because it doesn't get the wear. Okay, yeah. I would. I, that's what I would assume. And maybe but, also it's more of a s- stadium, so like maybe the heat sinks in a little bit. So maybe it's more humid. I don't know. Yeah, I could be There's something about that because that, that's the biggest one. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And it, well, it was humid yesterday too. It started raining a little bit, so I yeah. don't know. But oh, okay. Well. Um, back to Pegula. <laughs> yeah. Pegula. Sorry, I always pronounce it. Tiff. We were talking about this the other day. It's Pegula according to Jessica on her pronunciation on the WTA website. Um, she's rocking some Adidas. Yeah, yeah. Still with her Adidas stuff. Is she she's wearing been, barricades? Yeah, barricade and then the new kit for yes. AO. Yeah. And then still going strong with her Yonex. Her E-Zone. E-Zone 98. 98. Yeah. Works for her. She looks pretty flawless. Um I am going to shift real quick to someone else that's an Adidas player. and I don't know if you saw her, but... I was saying earlier this morning, 
it's just not fair because I don't know how she looks so amazing. Maria Sakari is wearing an Adidas crop top, and I literally sent pictures of her to a friend of mine at work and was like, goals. She looks insane. She, like, her arms, her shoulders, her abs, like, what? This girl. And she also is in Breakpoint a fair amount, which was cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I kind of get to see her personality a little bit. She's kind of a little goofy. Okay. And she likes espresso, so <laughs> I can And you see. wouldn't, like, think that as, like, the... She seems very serious. ...female warrior that right? they make her out to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She seems very serious. And um, so she looks amazing right now i mean she always looks amazing but just anyways yeah her fitness and then also just when we were talking about coco golf yeah she's like in like so right? fit, as such a young player man she's just like holy well, coco smoke. too i think we forget how old she is and to me she, i was saying yesterday i thought she looked stronger like a little leaner in my opinion yeah it could be the little cutouts and the new yeah. balance of it. um but she's She's giving me like Venus Williams vibes, like a young Venus, like right. strong, linky, yeah. covers the court. So crazy. Um, her her New Balance shoes, we can talk about those real quick. The CG1? The CG1. They will not stay in stock because I think everyone loves the style. I know you yeah. you and I both love them. Yeah, we yeah. wear them often. Uh, and I think you, I mean, I like the shoe, but I think you like the performance of them even more than I did. You know? I like, and they're them. they're comfortable and yeah, yeah. No, they're cool. You couldn't get them off your feet for a while. No, <laughs> and I keep putting them back on. Yeah, I wore them for some reviews recently. Uh, they're just stable, but like you feel cool in them, but you don't feel slow, even though they look like they could be a little too bulky. They're not. No, they don't feel yeah super heavy or anything. Yeah, um, it's cool that she's wearing them and. She's the only player out there wearing them, but yeah. it would be cool to see someone else endorsing them. Uh, I did want to say we saw or I saw the Cybersonic on a player yesterday. The Russian girl that was playing Danielle Collins. Yeah. Kalinskaya? Yes. Yeah. Kalinskaya. It was cool to see her in those shoes. Have you seen them on anyone else? There was like a warm-up tournament. I don't even know where it was, and I forget who he was playing. Some really young guy mm. from – I want to say he's either Croatian or Serbian. I can't even think of his name right now. Okay. <laughs> but it was kind of weird because he was wearing the Cybersonic, but he was sponsored. He was kitted in another brand, like New Balance or, oh, crazy. or Lotto or something. Yeah. It was another brand. I yeah. was like, okay. But then I saw the Cybersonic. Like, oh, he's trying out the new shoe. Yeah. So I don't know where he got them from or if he was I thinking about switching him. to Adidas, but there yeah. was a, a male player oh, in a cool. warm-up tournament, a young guy. Nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping to see him on a few more players, but um, – the Russian girl, she gave Collins a battle, and I I actually really liked the way she played. She, her serve reminded me a little bit of Martina Hingis, mm. kind of like old school Russian women's tennis. I don't know. She just blasted the shot. Yeah. But I liked watching her. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some points where I was like, she was hitting winners on Collins, and it wasn't like she was blasting the ball, just timing it right and hitting yeah. it right to the corners. Yeah. Her yeah. misses were not big misses when she did miss, and then, yeah. Another thing I noticed is she plays with the Wilson. She has the ultra. She's endorsing the ultra line. Yeah. But I want to say in recent previous years, I want to say she was Yonex and she was an oh, e really? she was an E zone girl. Okay, I might be wrong on that, but I was just like, oh, she, that's a Wilson. I was I was thinking it was a Yonex. That was an and I might be losing it, but we talk about endorsements and stuff. That was an interesting racket because. Looking, watching her play with it, the beam looked a lot thinner than. Yeah, an ultra. I think it is. I think it's a pro stock. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think it's the same pro stock that um, actually Isla uses and uh, Petra Kvitova, a mm -hmm. couple of your favorite players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, it's like the old um, Tour Tour ninety five. Okay. okay, which we the last racket that I think we tested that was made from that mold was like the Burn ninety five, the mm -hmm. Ultra ninety five. Okay. But the older ones weren't as stiff. So, so they're using 95 square inches? 95, 96. Okay. Um, kind of like the racket that like Lindsay Davenport and um, Justine Hennon used yeah. to play with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still. So they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. When, because, you know, we get those questions a lot. Like, how's a 95 going to be to versus a 97? And it's yeah. like, eh, it's a lot, but it's not, but it is. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with the racket shape, too. Right. Like they can play bigger or smaller than yeah. they're actually yeah. measured at. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, and then we can talk about Danielle Collins real quick, just 
go over the court. She yeah, talk about someone that's got different brands on. I love it, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Water Drop. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's like a hydration thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from what we have heard, uh, Danielle just wants to wear what she wants to wear, which right now it seems like she's wearing a lot of ALO, which is I think they started originally as a yoga brand, but they've kind of crossed into like yoga lifestyle. Clearly now they make tennis stuff. See them out on the pickleball court. See them on the, yeah, on the pickleball court. Um, she's also, you know, sometimes she'll wear, I know, Asia Muhammad's her and her friend started a line, and Asia wears it, and she'll wear that sometimes. Something called, lemons? or Yeah, lemons and laundry. Lemons and laundry, yeah. It's very similar vibe, like cute, stylish. But then she's – we got to love that Danielle's still wearing the Adidas Stella Court shoes. Yeah. And she just likes them. She's got – yeah, she's mostly worn Stella Courts in like the last uh, year. Year, yeah. She has try, tried Avocourt, I think, for a little bit. Yeah. And then she just keeps going back to the Stella Court. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, we get it. Like, girl, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But uh, from what we have heard and what we know is she just gets what she wants and she's not too concerned about an endorsement deal. And it seems like she obviously has water drop. So they must be, you know, that must be a nice little endorsement. But, yeah, yeah. she does her thing. She's very, <laughs> she's very, I don't know, independent. Yeah, sassy. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but the one thing that I feel like they have stuck by her is Babylon. Yes, and they've even used her in the marketing for the new Pure. Pure Arrow, so she's yeah. like one of the the main players for that. She so is. Yeah, looks like she's in the new Pure Arrow cosmetic at least. Yeah, um, I know she's been using an older version of the Arrow for a while. Anyways, going back to like college days. Yeah, and um, for string, I don't know if she used Babylon string. The last I. Recall she was using like uh, ALU or ALU yeah. rough. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't but, you help her out with a, a string yeah, up at the Yeah, uh, <laughs> up at the WTA San Jose. Nice. Uh, a couple summers ago, she was she needed some last minute alu power rough. So yeah. I think we got her. You hooked got her, her up, some. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Booney just started this game with some of the CSRs. I feel like we're just playing this game. Where from there, I'm gonna jump to Layla, who also is one of the big names endorsing the new Pure Arrow. Yeah. But she also has started. Wearing some unconventional, I, I put that in quotes, um, brands, I guess. Not, Is she sponsored by Lululemon? I would assume, uh, yeah. Well, actually, yes, because okay, they have also used her in marketing campaigns. Gotcha. She's also Canadian, and so is Lululemon, so it makes sense. Yeah. And then we have On Shoes. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Roger Shoes. She's been wearing those a I mean, pretty much of what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw, and this is. I don't want to go into the men because we're going to do that in a separate separate one. But we know Jack Sox has wear, been wearing on shoes, right? Yes. And then did I just see that Ben Shelton has been wearing on shoes? He, yeah, he had him like on during an exhibition match trying yeah. them out. Even though we'll talk about him. <laughs> he's been mostly New Balance. New ba yeah. And New Balance Lobs. Yeah. He was trying them. So, uh, yeah, I wonder, was he just trying them or were they like I don't the know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, back to Layla. There's been a few guys. Trying yeah. The shoes. Yeah. And it, we're excited. They're actually coming to Tennis Warehouse in this spring, hopefully March. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Um, but they should be available. We'll, so we'll see. Maybe we'll get to play test them. Um, but yeah. So Layla, and we were talking, we can keep connecting from Layla. Layla is playing doubles with Bethany Maddox Sands. Who okay. always um, likes to pave her own way. Yeah. And she has yet another gear swap for 2023. Do you know what she's using? <laughs> <laughs> the last I knew she was supposedly racket-wise, she was supposed to go with speed. Oh, yeah. No, it's changed. Okay. okay. Is, it a, is it still in the head family? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because she was like bouncing around between like a speed, extreme. There's another one. She's, Definitely not the prestige. No, <laughs> she's using a gravity. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's an MP tour or pro. I'm guessing the MP or the tour. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I know like when, when she was testing rackets, she was talking about the gravity. Then she was like, I try. She said something about trying Barty spec and then <laughs> Sasha spec. And I'm like... Who knows? Oh, man. She's all over the place. But I think that's relatable for a lot of the listeners, yeah. too, is like sometimes you're either all or nothing. Like you can't yeah. switch rackets like me or <laughs> you just want to keep switching. Yeah. 
Uh, what else? I uh, Speaking of doubles, um, Sam Stozier just announced that she's going to retire at the end of uh, this Australian Open. Oh, really? Which I was yeah. thinking she was already done for some I did reason. too. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. lie. I also did. So there's that. Um, I'm sure she'll hopefully make a good run. Usually in doubles, she does. Um, let's see. Who she's else? been a long time ASICs long for a time long ASICs. time and also – for quite a while now, been with head in the yeah. speed, which is it seems like becoming more of the more popular racket on tour. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's a nice it middle ground. Been. Yeah, I think when she first came over to head from Babylon a while back, she was extreme. That makes sense. But the racket she used to play with for the longest time in Babylon was like the old pure, pure storm, storm, which yeah. is like more like a radical or like a blade. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. That one was a popular one amongst many. Yeah. Um, who else? Who else should we cover? Donna Vekage. Oh, yes. That's kind of like jumping off uh, course a little bit with brands, but like she's still with her Yonex. Yes. She's in the new V Core 2023. Okay. okay. Um, but no longer, she's another one of those no longer Nike. Nike. Yeah. She's she was uh, Asics? No. I forget the name of the brand, but she's got her own line. She's going to oh, have her yeah. own line within the brand. And it's Zip the same the, brand uh, that Brooksby's in, Uomo. Or what he no, was. I think right? he might have switched to. Is it to. Uomo? Yeah. Uomo. But it's yes. the Donna line? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's kind of cool. They're kind of partnering with her to make tennis apparel, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, I yes. think this is the first time they're doing like a women's line. Yes. In that brand. That's very cool. Nice. And they're Italian or uh, Californian? <laughs> I'm not sure, but okay. the colors look Italian, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I always think it's American because of Brooksby, but yeah. Yeah. So Vekic, another one uh, that left Nike, the uh, young Ukrainian girl, Marta Kostiuk. Mm -hmm. She was Nike. Now she's uh, she's still with her Wilson racket. Okay. Blade. She used to be Yonix last year or two. She's been with Wilson in the blade, but she was Nike. Now she's rocking like an eclectic outfit of Wilson stuff. Okay. So I don't know if it's just because the Wilson brand, <laughs> yeah. racket brand, but yeah. she has like Rush Pro shoes and like, it looks like some sort of Wilson dress she's wearing. So. Interesting. Another player that, that left the Nike left train. Left the Nike, yeah. Which I know she's not playing the Aussie Open and I'm really sad, but Isla Tomjanovic, she's wearing Penguin. Yeah. Which looks really awesome, but there were rumors for her footwear, she got when she got to Australia, she was wearing Nike lifestyle shoes. So everyone mm -hmm. assumed she was going to switch into Nike shoes, but she's still wearing Wilson on court. So yeah. she has Wilson tennis shoes still. And Wilson like chaos or yeah. rush, rushes or something. One of the what, what, Wilson. They shoes. look cool. They're I think they're more the chaos. I don't know. They look really cool. I think they're the new ones that haven't come out just yet. Okay. But they look like they kind of have like a knitted upper. Yeah, and, like a sleeve. Yeah. Kind of fit. yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I know there are a lot of like, sometimes I feel like Wilson has this like group of people that love their shoes and she obviously seems like one of them. I know one of our sponsored girls also loves Wilson shoes, but I guess, yeah, I guess they're still making really great shoes, if, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise she would switch out. So Yeah. I want to say uh, Brooksby has been known to wear the Rush Pros on the men's side. There's been a couple other players that will wear hey. the Rushes. Okay. So um, lots of, yeah. Then a couple other players, I think, you know, pretty pretty good rankings, like in the top 50, top 30 range. Um, Sam, Sam Sonova mm -hmm. on the women's side. Yeah. So she just joined K-Swiss like last year. Okay, yeah. Head to toe. Yeah. Um, so K-Swiss player, and then she was Wilson Blade up until last the end of last year. Uh -huh. And now she's head speed. Okay, wow. So see? another one that went wow. to head using the endorsing the speed. Wow, okay. So Samsonova. And then another player that I noticed switch rackets. Um, and I got to watch her play quite a bit up in the San Jose tournament a couple summers ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynette or Lene. Uh-huh. Magda Lynette. Yes. Lynette. She's Joma. Yes. Apparel and all that. She went um, to Yonex, right? Yeah, she was but pure drive. Yeah. For like the longest time. But it's not a crazy change if you're going if you're gonna go to the Yonex brand, play with another similar racket, the E zone. Yeah. Uh fun fact, she did demo some Prince rackets. Oh really? Yeah. She was uh looking at Prince. She used to use Prince like long time ago and tried She's Polish. Few. She's Polish, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. We've yeah, got a like, little weird Polish connection here yeah, at Tita. Because <laughs> Iga used to play Prince. Yeah. 
And then what's the girl that we were at the Templeton tournament? Didn't uh, she, Kawa. She was she was using the she ripstick. is using Prince. Yeah, yeah, she'll be using. She was a Prince player. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think I don't know. I most players, it seems like, start use prints at one point or another when they're in juniors. But yeah, there's a weird like Polish prints thing too. And some are trying to come back. And she was actually demoing some print string that she really liked, but it's not available in Europe, and mm. it was being discontinued in the U.S. So it was one of those like, uh oh, we don't have enough. So I, yeah, so it's fun. It's interesting to see her um, with the E zone. Which I also know there's other uh, Polish ladies out there using, I think, E-Zone, maybe. Um, anyways, what else? Who else? Let's go. Let's do a quick run through of some of the team T-Dub ladies. Um, Asia Muhammad, she uses also an E-Zone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she uses Poly Tour Pro. I think she, last I knew, she was using the Rev. Just kidding. The the I thought she one? was using yellow. No? No, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I know she was thinking about changing her string setup, but she okay. didn't. I don't the think. Last time she came and she we were, she came down yeah, to the yeah, yeah. court, she was using Rev. Okay. Poly to her Rev. Rev. And she's still got some GP turbos. Like she found, we found like the last of the last. <laughs> she has them. And I think she lost um, last round of qualies before main draw. And that was like a tiebreaker. It was a rough. She had a rough. Oh. It was tough. Um. Who else? We've got some ladies that will be serious contenders on the double side of things. Juju Olmos. Yeah. She is rocking. So a lot of our ladies will wear the Nike shoes, but they needed shoes before the new Nikes came out. So okay. a lot of them are still wearing Vapor Pros. Okay. So I am the curious. First gen Vapor Pro. Yeah, yeah, I am curious to see if they go into the Vapor Pro 2 or the Vapor 11. But yeah. what racket does Juju use? Oh, she's Pure Drive. Pure Drive for the longest time. And she's one of the ones that like sticks with the OG um, Hurricane, the yellow. Yes. Hurricane. Yeah. Used to be Hurricane Tour. No, it's RPM Hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got her. Um, we've got Caitlin Christian. I actually am not super familiar with her racket setup. You might She's be. She's been vocal for a while. Her oh, yeah. and her Sabrina. Her and Sabrina. Yeah. And does she also use the V8 or no? They use the 8 series. The 8. Okay. So whatever the newest technology that we sell, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 8 300, I believe. Okay. And I don't know if they customize them up or whatever, but yeah, it's kind of like they're, you know, more powerful, power, yeah. easy power type of racket yeah. in their line. So. Yeah. And they both use Mizuno shoes, the Wave 2 RC, yeah. which is great. Um, I didn't notice or I haven't noticed a ton of Mizuno out on tour at the moment, but maybe I just didn't see anything. Yeah. There was a, there's a, um, the play, well, at least like on the guy's side, the, the ATP, some of the, the ones that have been using Mizuno for a while are still in them as far as footwear. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as the women's, I'm trying to think. Yeah. I know the, those two, though. KK and um, and Sabrina. Yes, yes. They for sure wear them. Um, who else? Who else? Des. Desiree. She's still rocking. I don't know if she switched to the new Pure Arrow. Have you seen? I haven't seen if she has. I think she might still be with the uh, the banana yellow one. I think so. <laughs> um Someone that did switch into the new uh, – another one of our Team T-Dub girls that I've seen is using the new cosmetic at least is um, Santa Barbara girl, Kayla Day. Kayla Day, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she did. Yeah. She switched and she also I think lost just by – missed the cutoff by one match in For Australia. The yeah. yeah. And then she's rocking. This will be another one. She's going to have to update her shoes. But she wears the 996 and we just saw the new V5s come in. So – I think from not testing them, just trying them on, they seem like an awesome update to me. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it'll be interesting if she switches into the V5. There's quite a few players that like those shoes on tour. Yeah, which is um, funny because the playtest team didn't love them because they were lacking support. Yeah. The women did. The men, not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little too soft, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Caroline Garcia. Oh, yes. Who's like yes. a WTA <laughs> player who's also. She was on uh, my list. Too. Head to toe Yonix, still Yonix racket with the apparel, but wearing her New Balance shoes Which, in, yeah. <laughs> in the practice and I, I'm assuming in her matches. Yeah. Yeah. Which she's one. We've been watching her shoes all year for the past year just to see where she would land. But again, who knows? 
I don't know. It's so interesting. Sometimes you just wish like, hey, can I get a copy of your contract and see what it looks like? Yeah, right. Um, what else? Well, that's probably enough on the ladies. And we'll, we can wrap this one up and head over um, to talk about the men. <laughs> Unless there's someone else that stands out that we didn't hit on. I know uh, one last one that I'll mention. Yeah. Uh, Venus. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, she's, uh, I don't know if she changed her contracts at all, but I know that for footwear, she's been with K-Swiss right. over the past, what, couple years or so. Yeah. Um, but lately she's been using the Lacoste shoes. That's, that's so. crazy. So she is, this is wild to me. She is a, a Lacoste am- ambassador. I can't say it. A Lacoste ambassador. So, like, I think that means she wears Lacoste off the court, but then she is her brand is 11. So she yeah. wears 11 on the court. <laughs> and then I think it sounds like she's wearing Lacoste on her feet. So, yeah, she has been lately crazy. wearing the Lacoste shoes. That's cool, though. But I always remember with Venus because she had her own, she has her own line and she would always wear the white vapors. Yeah. It, just because whatever. I don't know if Nike sent them to her or she just bought them. But. She was in Vapor X for the longest time. Yeah. She's kind of – she's smart. She's a smart lady. But, yeah, I would think <laughs> with her own brand, right? that's one way like, oh, there's a dispute between the two brands. She can just like, no, nah, that's my brand. I can right? just cancel it if I want. Yeah. You know? Oh, or whatever oh. she wants to do with her own she's business. Smart. Yeah. Know? So that's kind of So cool. cool. And then, yeah, I always – she's definitely one to keep an eye on because she's a fashion icon for sure. Yeah, cool. That's it. That's all we got for yeah. this episode. Okay. So, <laughs> so, wait, who'd you pick for your winner? I picked Irina Salonika. Oh, Salonika. Like and you picked a Jessica Pegula. Both have a very good chance. I wonder if they're up opposite sides of the draw. I know. Um, <sighs> That'd well, be a cool final, right? That would be, uh, yes. I feel like I'm just going to say it. Jessica Pegula is like very even keel. And but when she gets to the press conference, she's going to have her Heineken. I know. I, she, That's what I like about her. Sometimes, obviously, I wear my emotions on my sleeve, as does Sabalenka. And that's why I gravitate towards those types of players. But I can't. With, I don't know how she keeps her composure. Who's Sabalenka? No. Oh. <laughs> Pegula. Like, oh. she just wins a match and she's just like, anyway. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean. I think maybe she's a little sarcastic too. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. her. Like obviously. cheeky. Yeah. 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 Um, and then it's like, okay. I mean, you don't know what it's like to live in anybody else's shoes, but like when your parents own the bills. Oh my gosh. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, <laughs> it's I a different life. Honestly. I'm going go to Can you the, I'm gonna go to the AFC championship. Right. <laughs> Screw it. That's so cool. I know. That's so cool. To be in like that big of a sport. But honestly, I think it's awesome because it helps like transcend the sport because I think there's a lot of people who like watch tennis from afar and now that like she's doing really well people like see that she's connected to the bills and it's cool so she's bringing in more fans so we'll take it well that's all we've got for the WTA join us for our ATP chat and until next time happy hitting (laughs) yeah